VMware Explorer presentations contain forward-looking statements, including statements regarding the expected benefits of VMware's strategy, growth opportunities, and offerings, as well as the announced proposed acquisition of VMware by Broadcom that are subject to risks and uncertainties. Actual results and outcomes may differ materially as a result of various risk factors, including those described in the forms 10K, 10Q, and 8K that VMware files with the SEC. These forward-looking statements are made as of the initial date of this presentation, and VMware assumes no obligation to and currently does not intend to update them. For important information about the acquisition, see the public filings made with the SEC by each of VMware and Broadcom at sec.gov and also see reimaginingsoftware.com. Ragu, we're ready for you. Okay. Wait a second. Raghu Raghuram. Hello and welcome to VMware Explore 2022. It's, it's great to see all of you in person after three years. You all look just as young, by the way. <laughs> and a warm welcome to those joining us online. And I'm glad you could be with us today. So you just saw the video of me backstage clicking on an app. There's nothing remarkable about that app itself. There are many thousands of such applications that all of you built and run. That is the face of digital transformation for all of us. But as you watch and follow the packets going along and sit back and think about it, it reinforces that it takes a really broad community to make this happen. In fact, specifically, it takes this specific community to make that one app happen, let alone an entire digital transformation. Think about it. The developers that are building the application, the platform engineering teams, the cloud operations teams, the security teams. It's not a stretch to say that the digital, the shift to a digital economy 
is not going to be possible without all of you. Think about the numbers here. There are over 5 million developers in our community. 5 million. If you asked me 10 years ago, I would have said, no way. And these 5 million developers, especially on the Spring platform alone, are starting 350,000 new projects every week. 350,000 new digital projects every week. That is 35 new apps every minute. That's astounding. Even while all of this massive transformation is underway, we've got 85 million new workloads that are running globally, running your business. So together, this community is the community that is running all of our businesses today and taking us to this digital future. So the third leg of this community, besides you, and VMware is, of course, our partners. From day one, VMware has approached you to solve your problems with the help of the partners, 30,000 partners strong, many of whom are on the expo, expo floor this week, one of the favorite parts of my sh uh, stay at, the, at this event. Together, we are a force to be reckoned with. When we started VMworld, it was a community for data center professionals. And we grew that community. But over the years, we have broadened it. It's no longer just about the data center. It's about all of these roles that I just talked about, not only in the data center, but across clouds and the edge. It is truly a multi-cloud community these days. That is why we changed this event from VMworld to VMware Explore. VMware Explore from now and going forward is the event for the multi-cloud community. You come here not just to learn about VMware's products and services, but about all of the great developments that are happening in the multi-cloud universe. This is the gathering of the center of the multi-cloud universe. Now, I've been at VMware since 2003, and we've been through many major transitions as a company. But throughout all of these, we've been driving innovation focused around your problems. In May of this year, we announced the next major transition. We announced the proposed acquisition of VMware by Broadcom. And there are many folks from Broadcom that are joining us here online today. But in person, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to this fantastic community, Hawk Tan, Chairman and CEO of Broadcom. So since May, I've spent a lot of time with Hawk and his team. And most of our conversations have been about this community and how to open up the next great stage of innovation. We are ahead for an exciting journey. Now, let's talk about what's happening in your organizations. Whether you're a born in the cloud company or an established enterprise, all of you are running the same race. And that is the race to transform your businesses to become digitally smart. You are driving the acceleration of innovation velocity. That is a key priority. You are driving the next generation of automation using machine learning. That is a key priority. And you are driving the next great leap in employee productivity. This is what digitally smart means. And this is what set off the cloud journey now more than a decade ago. And the first step in the cloud journey, of course, was transforming the front office experience, delivering the next generation of mobile applications. 
That was a fantastic success. And that led to CIOs and CEOs thinking about replatforming everything in the enterprise, not just the front office, the mid office, the back office, all the processes, you name it. I call this the great replatforming. But when I talk to CEOs, here is what I hear back. What I hear back is that we are not moving fast enough. And the roadblocks tend to be very common regardless of industry. Let me mention just three roadblocks. The first one is the lack of skills, not just developer skills, but cloud skills, SRE skills, platform skills, you name it. The second is the weight of all of the enterprise applications that you've got to bring forward with you. And the third, because all of your teams are building applications on multiple clouds in the data center, following different models, there is no consistent developer experience that slows them down. There is a fragmented operations model that slows them down. There is fragmented security model that increases risk. All of these things are slowing down the great replatforming. In fact, we did a survey uh, in the summer. Many of you characterize the state of your current cloud deployments as cloud chaos. Okay? That's how you called it. And while the growth in cloud has been phenomenal, it is not surprising that it's only 10% of the overall spend of IT because of all the things that we just talked about. But here is good news. We can fix this, and we can change this picture. In fact, many companies are starting to figure out a better approach. This better approach is called Cloud Smart. In fact, you'll hear from a couple of businesses later in this talk about how they figured it out. Let me tell you what Cloud Smart means. Fundamentally, Cloud Smart means it's taking an architected and planned approach to digital transformation and multi-cloud. Simply put, here are some of the core principles of Cloud Smart. First is deploy the right cloud for the right application based on cost, technical factors, governance factors, data access factors, and so on and so forth. Second, invest in a unified developer experience regardless of where you're building applications. Because the single most critical bottleneck to you going faster is the developer productivity. If you want to accelerate the path to production, decrease developer toil, developer experience, and solving developer experience becomes an important aspect of Cloud Smart. Secondly, all of these enterprise applications need to run on a consistent infrastructure that has the resiliency, the security, and the cost effectiveness and the same operational model, regardless of where you want to run it, in the data center, in the edge, in the clouds of your choice. And thirdly, your employees are going to be using a variety of applications. Your traditional applications still in the data center, SaaS applications, new cloud-native applications. You got to remove the friction in how your employees deliver, how you deliver a frictionless experience to your employees so that they can go about and achieve the next great leap in productivity. These are the elements of Cloud Smart. Last year, at this event, we announced our vision for a set of technology services and platforms that enable you to be cloud smart. We called it the VMware cross-cloud services in five distinct areas. If last year was about the vision, this year I'm super pumped because we are delivering products and we are delivering some amazing products that you're gonna hear about later in this keynote. But some of you know that I'm a product guy, so I can't help myself. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek at a couple of them.
Okay? So the first of these is the big one. The next major release of vSphere and vSAN. vSphere 8 and vSAN 8. Together with NSX, vSphere, vSAN, and NSX formed the foundational building blocks of modern infrastructure available as software and as a service at any location of your choice. vSphere 8 and vSAN 8 took two years to build. It's a momentous new version. And it sets the foundation for the next decade of modern computing. The next decade of modern computing is going to be about what the industry analysts and the technical folk call heterogeneous computing in a single server and a single compute infrastructure. You're going to have available to you a variety of processors, the CPU, the GPU, and an exciting new processor called the data processing unit. And vSphere is going to be the singular platform that allows you to deploy and manage workloads and run them effectively and securely, regardless of what the underlying processor technology is. And this is going to allow you to run not only today's applications, but the next decade of AI and machine learning applications and data applications, real-time applications, telco applications, you name it. I'm super excited about vSphere 8 and vSAN 8. If vSphere is the foundation of your enterprise, Tanzu is the foundation of your cloud-native architecture. So at this event, you'll hear a lot more about Tanzu application platform. Exciting new product. Tanzu is already in use by some of our best and leading customers. Let developers be developers. I'm going to steal that phrase. So, like many of you, s and is building applications at a breakneck speed. Of course, all of these need to be managed. And that brings me to the next great new uh, announcement that I'm super excited about. And that is VMware Aria. Let me tell you what it is. Multi-cloud management is a huge problem today. At VMware, we build a lot of SaaS applications that are multi-cloud. And I see the bills every day and every month. We are spending millions of dollars building these new applications and managing them. So we understand deeply the challenges of building applications on the cloud and managing them to a high SLA, high resiliency, high level of security. Coming out of our understanding of this problem is Aria, a brand new multi-cloud management solution from VMware. Here is what makes Aria different and exciting. At the core of ARIA is a concept called the ARIA graph. Let me simplify it for you. So if you think about when back when Google first came about, their genius was they created a graph of the web, all of those web links. We have done something similar. We have created a graph of all of your cloud assets, your hundreds of thousands of VPCs and uh, Kubernetes clusters and serverless and on-prem and so on and so forth. And using this graph, we can do all sorts of management and security tasks and automation that you could never think of before. That is VMware Aria. It is at the core of our multi-cloud management strategy. And it should be at the core of your multi-cloud management strategy. Clearly, as we invest and innovate around multi-cloud, at the heart of this multi-cloud world are our cloud partners. And I've personally spent hours and hours working with my peers on how to innovate to solve these problems on multi-cloud. Last year, we introduced a new program and a new commercial model called Cloud Universal. And Cloud Universal is a single program and a single commercial model that allows you to consume cloud resources 
across all clouds. Now, when we introduced it last year, we introduced it for the private cloud and VMware cloud on AWS. So you all said, hey, that is great, but there is not multi-cloud. So we went back to work. Earlier this year, we added support for Google. And today, I'm excited to announce that Microsoft Azure VMware solution will be part of VMware Cloud Universal. So now think of this. You don't have to predict or wonder where your developers want to build the next great application, whose cloud services they want to connect it to, how to manage them, et cetera, et cetera. One commercial model covers all of these. You can choose then to flexibly build your applications on-prem, move it to the cloud, build it on one cloud, run it on another cloud, go crazy. All of it is covered by one commercial model. Cloud Universal is the commercial model for Cloud Smart. And we are looking forward to all of you adopting our Cloud Universal program. And over time, we're going to enhance, continue enhancing Cloud Universal to cover so many of our other cloud partners as well. So continue to look forward for that. Now, as proud as we are of enabling your economic advancement, all of us have a larger collective responsibility. When a big, big chunk of the global economy runs on your platforms, there is a broader responsibility. When we started vSphere, when we started ESX, in fact, one of the key value propositions was the savings in power consumption. The sustainability benefit of vSphere was one of the key reasons why you all adopted vSphere. Now today, as we live in this multi-cloud world, nearly two decades later, the challenges of sustainability are, I would say, an order of magnitude more important and more relevant to all of us. So we introduce VMware Zero Carbon Committed Initiative. That's a mouthful. Okay, ZCCI. And what it is, is a commitment that all of the VMware software will be running on data centers powered by 100% renewable energy by 2030. And we are proud to say there are many, many, many partners that have joined us in this, service providers and hyperscalers. This is an example of the collective impact we can have as a community using the power of technology for progress. Next in this session, in the next session, we're going to hear from one of our most innovative customers that is taking a cloud smart approach to drive positive impact. Before he comes on stage, thank you once again for joining us here at Explore 2022. Welcome, Sumit Dawan. Good morning. It's been too long. How do you feel? <laughs> Me too. Raghu talked about technology driving progress in society. SMP Global Video mentioned the same thing. No, I'm not talking about me doing my dance moves on TikTok. I'm talking about how all of you are creating amazing technology infrastructure so that your enterprises can build amazing innovations that are making 
great progress for all of us. Thank you. One such great example is CVS Health. And today, I'll be speaking with Executive Vice President and Chief Information Officer at CVS Health, Roshan Navagamula. So, without any further delay, please join me in welcoming Roshan. Roshan. Hey, Sumit. Great Ro to be here. Roshan, great to have you. And you've been to a VMware event before? My first VMware event. Uh, wonderful to be back in San Francisco. I've come here often, but my first event. Thank you for changing the name for me. Yeah, we just want to make sure the audience is always up on the toes. <laughs> so uh, we were having the conversation, Roshan, and you shared some amazing statistics, the role that CVS Health has played through the course of last two and a half years in the pandemic has been amazing. Over 100,000 medical professionals administered over 50 million vaccinations, more than 30 million tests, and because of all the mental health problems that people have had, more than 20 million visits for mental health. Thank you so much on behalf of everyone. Now, in addition, you also shared some great statistics about your company. And if I were a betting man, I would say almost everyone here has probably been to a CVS Health store over the course of last two years. More than 45 million digital visits a day, nearly 5 million people coming into stores. So I am sure that keeps you busy because all of CVS Health is driven through this tech-forward strategy. The audience would love to know more about that. That's right. You just hearing you talk about those numbers, and it just puts it into context for me, the scale of the impact that we have. It makes me so proud that technology is such a huge enabler in all of that. And you know, put simply, our technology strategy is to be digital first in everything that we do. And that starts with our consumers, where we think about it in terms of how do we make it easier and more convenient for all of our consumers to be able to access healthcare, right? And then to be able to improve their outcomes as a result of that and, you know, lower the costs combining with, you know, the smartest technology capabilities to do that. And then we also think about it in terms of our colleagues and how do we enable them with the everyday tools and capabilities to keep those customer promises in this dynamic and fast-paced environment, right? And then how do we enable both those things with the underpinning technology capabilities that are common platforms, cloud-based services and, and, and solutions? And so I, I think of cloud as this underpinning, you know, rising tide effect for our broader technology strategy. So clearly, cloud's, are play, cloud's playing a big role in right. the overall strategy, and you've been on a journey. You've shared that with me. Please do share with the audience your journey. Yeah, it is, it's been a journey. So we started in the early days with our consumer-facing digital teams, our analytics teams, really taking advantage of uh, cloud um, in the early days, and, and they were the first to have meaningful cloud-based solutions. But very quickly, what we found was that there was a broad spectrum of developers that really want to take advantage of cloud as well. And so what started out as this, you know, few and, and small-scale solutions really scaled out to become products and services that are now core to our business and power a lot of what, you know, you, you, you outlined with the COVID response and such. All of that was cloud-powered for us. And so we found a lot of value in it. But, you know, initially, these teams were working in a way that, you know, we, we let them work in a way that was fast, right, with a lot of localized control. Then we realized, hey, we have to pull back. Let's reset. Let's do an enterprise-optimized approach and have a real hybrid multi-cloud software foundation to power it and really realize the priorities, which, you know, I, I shared with you operationally. We have to be secure and resilient, have the right financial controls. We have to have a better developer experience. And then we have to have an ecosystem of reusable products, all of which add up to create that business value that we're trying to do at speed and at scale. Now, you've talked to me about this inflection point. Your chart shows this inflection point as well. 
And the inflection points usually just don't happen on their own. There are structural implications and there are organizational implications. Right. So you went through that and made some changes in your teams and structure to make sure that acceleration took place. Please do share that. Yeah, we did. And, and frankly, there are people in this room who, who were the real brains behind it. And what they realized was that we have all these teams, these multiple teams, that work in a loosely coordinated way, and we need to bring them together. And so we now have this unified cloud and distributed services team that owns all of it. And they have a streamlined operating model, and they're really focused on how to make it easy, like Raghu said, for developers, right? And with that, we're able to drive the high velocity of business outcomes that we're really aiming for. You know, in my job, I get a pleasure to speak with Roshan, CIO like yourself and, you know, many of your peers. And I hear a consistent theme that oftentimes when customers have to start with building new applications and embracing cloud, usually these three teams are there. One that's already been there, which is responsible for private cloud and typical infrastructure. But then, in addition, a cloud ops team as well as a platform engineering team is set up. And soon, once these teams start scaling, there is this little bit of cloud chaos, at Raghu, as Raghu described, because not the chaos among the teams themselves, but to the stakeholders, you know, which is developers or, or business, uh, could be the, the finance teams as well as security teams, because each of these teams are bringing their own and stovepiped and siloed points of view. And uh, was this any of your experience? Absolutely, right? So I think chaos is a well-chosen term because, you know, when I did roundtables and talked to our developers and architects and our stakeholders, they were not shy about telling me just how confusing it was and how time-consuming it was. And so by unifying all of these teams together and having that streamlined operating model, we were able to you know, I'd say make some inroads in solving that problem. We have more work to do, and that's actually part of why our team's here this week, right, to really try to build on that and reduce that complexity. Yeah, that's exactly right. And we say this cloud-smart model, just like CVS Health has embraced, brings these three key functions together into a converged model so that you're serving the stakeholders that need a unified way of managing your entire infrastructure and getting the information they need in a consistent way. So now you went through something similar for your colleague experience as well and the workspace. Yeah, very similar. We, we had multiple teams that focused on different aspects of our colleague technology, uh, you know, laptops, collaboration, email, the usual nine yards. And we said, listen, we need to think about this in the same way where we have to converge this and not think about these as different aspects of colleague technology, but a unified colleague experience, which is really what we're aiming for. So how do we bring all of that together? So we did similar move there to bring our teams together, our operating model together, and really focus on experience for our more than 300,000 CVS colleagues, especially the folks on the front lines, our healthcare workers like our pharmacists and nurse practitioners, who need to focus on the patient, not kind of figure out the tech. So in this new world of multi-cloud, we think a cloud-smart organization would have one team that's responsible for, you called it cloud and distributed services. We'll take the liberty of calling it a multi-cloud team. And then a workspace team that provide these converged functions that we have listed here. So let's transition and maybe let me ask you, relationship with VMware and CVS Health, how do you see that? Listen, I, we, we love the relationship. We started obviously as you know, partners in simplifying and automating our data centers, expanded that right with our hybrid multi-cloud strategy, really leveraged VMware and, and your relationship. But really the thing that impressed me the most was not just the great product, but also the implementation support and services that we receive. It was really important because that focus on the tech and the you know, realization of the business value allowed us to focus on our core mission as CVS Health on driving consumer-centric healthcare. So we appreciate it. And how do you change or your expectations for us in the future? Well, build on it, you know, with co-creation, the innovation work that, you know, again, our teams are here talking about 
and, and exploring new solutions. So I think the explorer concept just makes a lot of sense. Okay, well, looks like you're sold on the name. Listen, you talked about innovations, and our commitment to you is for the way you have set up your teams, our commitment is to deliver you unified solutions for that. And obviously, everyone here is also interested in knowing about the innovations. So we will jump into the innovations next. But before we do so, I'd like to have all of you give a big round of applause to Roshan. Roshan, thank you. Thank so you. Much. Welcome, Amanda Blevins and Kit Colbert. All right. Good morning, everyone. Let me try that once again. Good morning, everyone. Woo! Love it. Bring in the energy. That is awesome. What a fantastic session there with CVS Health. Amazing to see their journey toward Cloud Smart. But as Raghu mentioned earlier, the reality, and this is what our survey showed, is that most of the customers are still in this cloud chaos phase. And from our discussions with them, it oftentimes is technology that's the limiting factor there. Yes, and that's correct. When you use a single cloud, you're able to take advantage of single development tools, build tools, management, governance, network and security, et cetera, et cetera. But when you move to multiple clouds, now you can create these silos with these tools and your operational model because they're different for each of them. <clears throat> right, and this is exactly what leads to this sort of cloud chaos. Now, some folks might say, hey, wait a sec, well, why can't I just have a single cloud, right? right. This kind right. of perfect nirvana world. But the reality is that that's just not what we see. We see acquisitions happening, lines of business going off and doing their own thing, technology landscapes changing, best of breed technology changing, and inevitably, folks end up with multiple clouds, and thus with this situation. And what we realize is that it's fundamentally an architecture issue, that we need to move away from relying solely on single cloud services and embracing what we call cross-cloud services. So cross-cloud services means that we move those capabilities up. So now we can have the same network and security and solution, for example, across multiple clouds, including private and edge. Right. And so this is exactly what we're doing here at VMware. Our cross-cloud services portfolio, as Raghu mentioned, has a bunch of really powerful capabilities that span the life cycle application, or the life cycle of an, of an application, <clears throat> going from creation to deploy to operations to securing it to accessing it, right? But doing so in a cross-cloud architecture. And by embracing these technologies, we can get you to cloud smart. Now, Raghu also talked about these three different cloud smart strategies. So let's talk about how these cross-cloud services support each of these. And let's start with accelerating application development. So when you're trying to develop applications for multiple clouds, you want to be able to solve for having a secure software supply chain. You want to provide a consistent developer experience. And of course, we want to be able to manage, govern, and provide the right guardrails for these solutions. So the way that VMware helps is with our cross-cloud app platform services, like Tanzu for Kubernetes operators and Tanzu application platform. Right. And we do the same on the management side. When you think about governance and automation, self-service, these things, you want to have a consistent implementation across clouds. And this is exactly what we provide with VMware Aria. Two out of five. What's next? Okay. So now let's go to that next cloud smart strategy, focusing on a consistent enterprise infrastructure. So there are some challenges here as well. We want to make sure that we can meet our enterprise application requirements. We might want to do data center extension or, data, or you know, cloud migration. And of course, we need to be able to recover from disasters like ransomware. Right. So how do we help? Our cross-cloud infrastructure service, VMware Cloud, the platform for running modern and traditional applications anywhere, including at the edge, is a great start. Right. And we do the same with networking and security. Leveraging VMware NSX, VMware Carbon Black, again, allows you to do standardization on networking security across all clouds, really all locations right. where you're running your application. All right, four out of five. Let's hit the last one. All right. <clears throat> so now let's focus on that frictionless end user experience. 
Okay, so we want to make sure that we can access these applications that we've created. We don't want to have a poor user experience. We don't want to have fragmented security. We want to make this easy on our, on our operational teams. And so with VMware's cross-cloud Anywhere Workspace service, comprised of Anywhere Workspace and Secure Access Service Edge, we can help you with that, right? Yeah, exactly. Five out of five, up high. Woo. All right. Yes. I did it. Now look, we're just a couple of CTOs presenting some slides up here, right? But we're very proud of ourselves. But look, we did it, we the did reality it. is that there's a tremendous amount of technology that goes behind all this. Many of you are familiar with the broad portfolio that we have at VMware, but it's exactly what we're uh, driving to here. It's this architectural evolution, moving away from single cloud services to cross cloud services, simplifies that architecture, as you can see visually here in this diagram. Yep. And this is what leads to cloud smart. So again, it's a technical sort of architectural evolution that will open that up. Okay, <clears throat> now, we just barely scratched the surface in each of these three areas. So what we want to do throughout the rest of this general session is do deep dives into each of them. And we're going to start by going into accelerating application development. Let's do it. Please welcome Deshaun Carter. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here. All the innovation that we've heard already, some of these kids don't know how good they've got it right now. It is a great time to be a developer, and it feels like just yesterday, Spring Boot was my new favorite thing. I was thrilled about all the cloud-native possibilities, all the things that brought me here today as a Spring Developer Advocate. I'm excited to share my journey with a good friend. He helped me along my journey as I was learning Kubernetes, learning all about cloud native. He's a Kubernetes community icon. He's a principal engineer at Google Cloud. Please welcome to the stage, Kelsey Hightower. Welcome everybody. One thing we're going to talk about is how did we get here? It's 2022, and it seems like something new is coming up all the time. Like just a few minutes ago, VMware announced like 700 new products. <laughs> I'm pretty sure of you just when you got that last VMware certification. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and when I meet a lot of people that are coming into this cloud native world, they're like, Kelsey, things change all the time. How did we get here? How did it get so complex? It feels like it came out of the blue. I think to answer this question, I gotta walk you back through my journey. And so, a couple of years out of high school, in 2001, VMware announces ESX Server, which made virtualization accessible to most people without custom hardware, commodity machines. Raghu mentioned that he joined VMware in 2003, and something must have happened because in that time, I found myself in a data center staring at a broken server that was running Windows NT 3.1 Service Pack 2 <laughs> Workstation Edition. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, who put Workstation on the server? I go to order a new server. And it turns out that version of Windows NT doesn't work. I'm in trouble now. I don't even know what that server does, but I know I probably should bring it back up before anyone starts asking questions. So I virtualized the machine, and it turns out I was able to get compatible hardware, virtual hardware, to run this software, this very specific version of an operating system. And in that time, I realized the value of separating the operating system from the underlying hardware. And most people just treated these things like static infrastructure. But then that pattern, we would go on to do the same thing for storage, for networking, and in many ways, we would virtualize the entire data center. And that gave birth to the cloud. That's right, folks. Data center native technology 
gave birth to the cloud. And so in the cloud, we took the advantages of virtualizing everything and gave people an infrastructure API. No longer are you racking, stacking servers. How many people remember those days of cutting your finger on that small, skinny piece of metal as you racked it into the server? Those days are gone now, replaced by an API, and we call it the cloud. The VM started to get smaller and much faster to start up. I blew my, it blew my mind the first time I saw a link clones in action. You mean I can click this button and get a VM in less than 10 seconds? That pattern would go on to give us the foundation of the one app per VM. And this pattern was super critical because finally we can start to build out these appliances. Those appliances had everything you needed. And if you remember correctly, we created a whole specification for the VM format. We can actually export it to other cloud providers. The virtual machine was becoming portable, but there was a problem. It was still machine centric. And the reason why we create machines are to run applications. And that leads the way, the exact same pattern leads the way to containerization. So a lot of people think containers are this new thing that came out of the blue and it changes everything. The truth is it's essentially the thing we had been doing for the previous 10 to 15 years. We just got more explicit about the application concerns. If you've never built a container, pay attention to that idea of using a Docker file and you'll see the very same scripts we used to run to make machine images are actually the same process we use to make container images. This pattern would then go on to create a situation where we had application sprawl. You all remember VM sprawl? You would give out a bunch of VMs and then people would lose their VM. Like how do you lose a whole virtual machine? <laughs> and so they create five more only to lose them even further. And so then we became to do things around orchestration. Instead of just giving hypervisors with a bunch of VMs on top, we started to give people control planes and dashboards so they can actually manage and organize these machines. Well, we created the same problem for the application containers that we created. And it turns out a lot of people with the VM experience came into this new community and taught us the value of some of the older ideas of before. And so we added a bunch of API specific things for applications and we happened to give it a name and we chose to call it Kubernetes. Now we're gonna zoom out really quickly and if you step back from all of this, I'm gonna to return to the original question. How did we get here? Well, hopefully at this point the answer is obvious because you helped us do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kelsey. It is VMware Explore 2022. We are celebrating eight years of Kubernetes. Luckily, all that rapid growth, all that rapid adoption of new technologies, VMware has been here before. Luckily for you. Thanks again, Kelsey. Right now, we know, according to the state of Kubernetes, we know that most of you are running Kubernetes in production. Roughly half of you are planning to expand your Kubernetes environments within the year. There's going to be some challenges. And that's okay. We've been here before. Developer experience, operating Kubernetes effectively and efficiently, and the multitude of environments and applications that you need to manage, top to bottom. Let's start with the developer experience. The path to production starts at the developer laptop. The path to production starts at the developer laptop. Your platform teams are responsible for delivering that, making sure that your developers have a path to production. There's going to be things that get in the way. Long lead times, cumbersome checkpoints, all of the things that it takes to get infrastructure set up along the way, decreasing the time it takes to get from idea to production. Let's fix that. Developer experience has become an executive priority. 94% of decision makers are reporting it is an executive strategy around developer experience. Yet only 27% are calling it mature. 
Why is that? There are four things that we need to do in order to have a mature developer experience strategy. First, we have to have pattern-based development. Some application templates would be super powerful if they were approved. Great way to start your path to production. Also, self-service. Give your developers access to the things that they need to get to production. Meet developers where they are. Meet them in the tools that they're in, like their IDEs. And last, continue to shift security left. <laughs> I am jazzed to tell you about tons of application platform. We do those things. We are born in developer experience. App accelerators, developer portals built on backstage, and a software supply chain orchestration that is just beautiful to look at, and so much more. And I'm so, so, so jazzed, jazzed, I tell you, to tell you about CAP 1.3. This is, this is it. This is a goosebumps moment for me. Dynamic API registration. Dynamic API registration. When you deploy your APIs to production, they are going to be dynamically registered with the backstage API catalog. What does that mean? You can browse, discover, consume APIs automatically out of the gate based on your roles. That's API-first development. That's it. That's the goosebumps right there. That is API-first development, and that is exciting stuff. Vulnerability dashboard is up next. I get to see my software supply chain in one spot. I can have all the insight that I need to what's happening on that path of production. I can see my security scans, their status, before I get to production. Nobody wants to get, oh, hey, there was something broken after you get production. I want it before I get there. Continuing to shift to security left. This is exciting. And core to the value of Tanzu, we continue to expand our ecosystem. Continue to expand our ecosystem. And we're always going to any cloud, any Kubernetes. And now I am, did I say jazz? I am jazz to announce support for Red Hat OpenShift. <laughs> and highly regulated air gapped environments are also supported. And security, of course, we integrate with Tanzu Service Mesh with Entrea, providing a single global namespace for all of your policy management, top to bottom. Any cloud, any Kubernetes. But at scale, hey, we're growing the apps. Developers are feeling great because they're on tap. But now what? Clusters are going to grow. Things are going to move. And you've got to manage that. Operators, we haven't let you out. Platform engineers, we're here for you. These are the things you're going to run into. You've got to operate and deliver Kubernetes safely, quickly, and securely. That's it. That's it. Kelsey showed us we're, we've done this before. We know how to do these things, and we're here to help. Tanzu for Kubernetes operations is going to help. This is how you're going to deliver at scale. These are the things that you need to understand, and we're here to help. It's built in. Core to Tanzu for Kubernetes operations is Tanzu mission control. And I am pumped to tell you about the new features of Tanzu for Kubernetes operations. Core to it is Tanzu Mission Control at the center. Multi-cloud, multi-cluster, multi-Kubernetes management. Tanzu Mission Control across all of the things. That's the center. Some of the features that it's going to bring. I'm excited to announce in preview lifecycle management for AWS EKS. For those workloads that are already in public cloud, we got you. This is exciting. Plus, cluster delivery, consistent delivery with GitOps based on our Flux CD integration. And cross-cluster, backup and restore, backup from one cluster, go ahead and restore it in another. And so much more. Tanzu for Kubernetes operations. Now we've expanded. Developers are happy. Operators know how to deliver. Everybody's feeling good. But you have CEO, Red Goose, still looking like, hey, how much is that going to cost? Didn't we set a budget on that? How many people? Don't raise your hand. Went to bed on Friday night thinking, huh, sure, everything's fine. Nobody would leave something running overnight in the cloud. There's no way I'm going to wake up on Monday to a nice large bill, right? No, never happen. Do not raise your hand. 
as you're growing, as these environments are growing, especially multi-cloud, it's nice to have things in place to protect yourself. Questions are going to be asked. Where do I put my apps? Which cloud? Which apps? Am I doing this effectively? Do I have consistent management across? Am I looking at cost versus performance? Do I have the guardrails in place to do this effectively? Can we grow? And does everybody have the information that they need? Dragu stole my thunder a little bit, but I am jacked to announce VMware Aria. Jacked, I tell you. I don't have to answer those questions. Where's the budget? How much are we spending on the budget? Near real-time data, cost, automation, and operations, all under one roof, integrated with VMware Aria Hub, powered by Aria Graph. That real-time graph, those insights that we need to operate efficiently and effectively going forward, this is where it's at. Unified management, multi-cloud unified management. It's great, a single data source across the clouds, across your environments. Federated access, bring all the data into one spot and let's get that data out. Let's get it to the people that need it, all the stakeholders. So my developers are happy, my operators are feeling good, they're delivering efficiently and effectively and my stakeholders have their data. VMware Tanzu and VMware Aria working together for developer experience, operating Kubernetes across the multitude of environments that you're delivering, all the apps, for all of the roles that need it, any Kubernetes, any cloud, for organizations just like yours everywhere. And there's so much more today but in order to do that, I need to bring Kit back up here. Thank you. Dude. Woo! <clears throat> who, else, who else is jazzed? Oh, not being jacked. I didn't even know that was a thing, but I'm down for it, dude. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> so, some really, really exciting announcements here. Tom's Replication Platform 1.3. Love the focus on developer experience, on secure software supply chain, really shifting that security left. And of course, support for Red Hat OpenShift. Tonsu for Kubernetes operations, great to see all the evolution there. Focus on the platform team, support for AWS EKS, really cool stuff. And then VMware Aria, a new management, evolved management offering, cross-cloud focused or built on, I should say, a graph database. Really, really cool stuff. Okay. Now, let's turn our attention to the next section, which is delivering a consistent enterprise infrastructure. Please welcome Dave Morera. Can you believe we're back? I am pumped to be back. Who is pumped to be back? Yes. When I was a customer, I loved coming here to learn about VMware's new products and find answers and solutions to problems and challenges. And I'm sure you're here for similar reasons. We are here to explore. Yes, pun very much intended. And we will explore how VMware Cloud, our cross-cloud Service for running, managing, and securing your enterprise workloads can help you modernize your applications, infrastructure, and operations. But what is so unique about VMware Cloud? Well, VMware Cloud is all about that consistent enterprise infrastructure for resiliency, performance, scalability, ubiquitously located across on-prem, all the major public clouds, and out to the edge, it's a strategy we call VMware Cloud Anywhere. Our approach is since day one, and one that we continue to expand with partnerships and new capabilities. See, firewalls at the perimeter are great, right? But what happens when attacks get through? VMware Cloud can uniquely protect your applications by stopping that lateral movement of the attacks. On top of that, you can rapidly migrate and modernize your applications 
And best of all, we do this with attractive economics and total cost of ownership. We do that by maximizing the utilization of your infrastructure. To get things started, I want to talk about core platform innovations across compute, storage, networking, management. Think of this as building blocks for VMware Cloud, delivering new benefits across private, public, and the edge. So let's start with compute. Before businesses, business infra infrastructure services and early AI ML ran on host CPUs, right? They were GPUs, but they were mainly used for graphic intensive applications. But then with the innovation of GPUs, advanced AI ML, it started to move to GPUs and vastly improve that performance. And what we're seeing now with the introduction of data processing units is that a similar technology shift is happening where infrastructure and data services are highly optimized on DPUs. So this heterogeneous computing where workloads run on the optimal processor type will be the architecture for modern computing for the next decade. And to help VMware customers with this architectural shift, I am pumped to introduce Visual 8. The Enterprise Workload Platform. Yes, give it up for Visual 8. Yes. I am truly pumped for Visual 8. There's a lot of goodness in this release. And by far, my new favorite release of Visual. So Visual 8 is supercharging your workload performance by fully utilizing all I talked about. CPUs, GPUs, DPUs, that new modern architecture. Now, we talked about DPUs with Project Monterey for some time, right? And this is a project very close to my heart. I've been working on it for a while. It's like my baby almost. And today, Project Monterey becomes part of vSphere 8 with vSphere on DPUs. I feel like a very proud parent today. See, in today's environment, both the infrastructure services and workloads are sharing that host CPU. By but when we leverage DPUs, the computing and infrastructure services are being offloaded to achieve that higher workload consolidation rate, better performance, security isolation. So this is a huge technological advancement that requires close collaboration with our technology partners. But don't take my word for it. We put this to the test by offloading a Redis workload. And we were able to achieve up to 20% savings on CPU cores. So that is not a trivial number, right? 20% is 20%. And that's like getting a two CPU generation upgrade just like that. On top of that, we took advantage of those free CPU resources and pushed the application and achieved up to 36% higher transaction rate with 27% lower latency. And other network intensive applications can also take advantage of this shift. You're supercharging your workloads without having to change a single line of code. Think about that. Now let's talk about how vSphere 8 can improve modern graphics and AI ML applications. We have double the number of vGPUs per VM on vSphere 8, and four times the number of pass-through for GPUs and PCIe devices. So imagine your recommendation engines, computer vision, video processing systems running two to four times faster just by upgrading to vSphere 8. As you can see, vSphere 8 is ushering in that new architecture for modern computing, but also solves your existing problems right now. We're accelerating innovation for DevOps with a new cloud service called Cloud Consumption Interface, a Kubernetes-based interface for all VMware Cloud infrastructure. It is one of the many benefits available for vSphere Plus customers. And for lifecycle management, you can significantly reduce your maintenance windows for ESXi upgrades. So we talked about compute, 
And let's move on to the next core platform, storage. And today, I'm also super pumped and jazzed, I never said jazzed before, to introduce vSAN 8, the next generation storage platform. Yes. vSAN 8 introduces the new vSAN Express storage architecture. And it is packed with innovation, like a new data path, new file system, native snapshots, and support for next generation storage devices. But best of all, we get the same user experience that you're used to with the product that you know and love today. Vsan 8 delivers up to four times faster performance without any trade-offs. So it enables you to run those applications that are IOPS hungry, latency sensitive. So imagine what you can do right now with four times faster performance in your environment. Next, we're reducing TCO for up to 40% as a result of that substantially reducing, substantially more usable capacity. And finally, native snapshots with up to 100 times faster operations to boost storage resiliency. So you heard the saying, faster, better, cheaper, pick two. Well, with vSAN 8, you don't have to pick two. You get all three. You get faster performance, lower TCO, and better operations. Pretty cool, huh? So, wow, I mean, that was two major releases for VMware's flagship products. Both are building blocks that power VMware's cloud solutions. And to talk about cloud solutions, I'm going to need some help from a friend. You may know him. He's a VMware expert, community hero, blogger superstar, William Nam. Oh, whoa, whoa. hold on, hold on. What's up? All right, this might be a little bit weird right now. Whoa, what's um, yes. Um, can I install Vs for 8 on this thing? No, dude, focus, you have a keynote to deliver. <laughs> okay, we'll talk later. Uh, security, that is Dave Mora, DM. Okay, let's talk about some of the brand new innovations for VMware Cloud and AWS. VMware's managed service with AWS, our preferred public cloud partner. First, great clouds require great storage solutions, and who better to deliver that than VMware and our ecosystem of partners? Previously, if you needed to add additional storage capacity to your cluster, a new host was needed. Now, customers can utilize the new VMware Cloud Flex Storage, a native VMware managed storage service that enables you to easily scale your storage capacity without adding additional host. And this can all be done with just a few clicks within the VMware Cloud console. Talk about simplicity. Customers can also take advantage of the new <laughs> Amazon FSx for NetApp ONTAP, an AWS managed storage service providing you with a consistent NetApp experience across on-prem and cloud. Both solutions provide supplemental storage with vSAN for some of those capacity-heavy workloads, like big data, digital media processing, and even those performance-hungry OLTP workloads. Two, new ways to independently scale your storage capacity while reducing the overall TCO. Now, for some of those more resource-intensive workloads, you know the ones I'm talking about, databases, data analytics, and even real-time applications, customers now have access to the new and more powerful Amazon i4i.meadow instance type. This adds nearly twice the number of cores, doubles the memory, and gives you over three times the storage capacity and network bandwidth. This thing's on fire. So, so what does this mean for some of your most demanding workloads? Well, I just have one message for them. Bring it on, we're ready for you. Next, many of you have been asking for an easier and lower cost way of getting started with VMware Cloud and AWS. Just imagine for a second. If you could take, if you can start with a much smaller configuration and be able to grow that based on the needs of your applications. Well, imagine no more. 
Today, I'm super excited to announce the preview of VMware Cloud Flex Compute, a brand new resource consumption model where you'll be able to purchase different configurations of compute, storage, and networking that are optimized to run a set of virtual machines and container workloads. In fact, I actually got a sneak peek of it earlier this week, and it is really easy to get started, especially with a 97% smaller starting configuration than what is required today. And as application requirements trained, and trust me, they will, you'll be able to dynamically resize that capacity and instill aligning your costs with those resource needs. And best of all, the capacity that is available is available within minutes after provisioning. VMware Cloud Flex Compute will be one of the easiest ways to bring your existing and new workloads to the cloud. This was just a taste of some of the innovations we've been doing, and this really has been a, re been a result of the close collaboration and joint engineering partnership between VMware and AWS. And I can't wait to see how you will take advantage of these new game-changing capabilities to accelerate your cloud transformation. Whew, that was a lot of new innovations that we just talked about. Let's now see VMware Cloud in action with one customer's multi-cloud journey and their cloud smart approach using VMware. Lexmark, generally known as an imaging company, has evolved into a global technology leader in both imaging and IoT, offering enterprise software and IoT solutions to a wide variety of industries. They needed to have a reliable and compatible infrastructure and that's where VMware Cloud came in. Lexmark is a longtime vSphere customer, and they are now on their multi-cloud journey. By implementing vSphere Plus and Azure VMware solution, they're now able to run workloads where it makes business sense. vSphere Plus provides a centralized control plane to manage, operate, and secure their entire vSphere estate. Again, bringing the benefits into their on-prem data centers more easily. They also wanted to unify their teams and processes through further automation and consistency. And with the compatibility of Azure VMware solution, they now have a single team that manages it all and prevents silos. This digital infrastructure brings agility, cost, and increased security for Lexmark. Business outcomes delivered by VMware Cloud. So we've explored the core platform earlier today. We had just looked at the public cloud. I guess the only thing left is a deep dive into the edge. And to be able to do that, I'm gonna bring my buddy Dave back up on stage to talk about some of our edge innovations. Yeah. Thanks, William. Good job, Saver. Good job. I installed uh, VSphere 8 on that server already, so you're done. It's that easy. So William's right. So many innovations we talked about, but we're not done yet. We're going to talk about the edge. And edge computing is the fastest growing segment for workloads right now. Those edge native applications deliver real-time intelligence and immersive experiences. So let's see how some of our customers are using edge computing powered by VMware. One example, a global food company, JBS USA Holdings, is using VMware for computing vision and AI to do real-time quality inspection of meat processing. This is reducing their waste and improving sustainability practices. Another example, Audi's Edge Cloud for Production runs on VMware Cloud, VMware Edge Compute Stack, revolutionizing factory automation they're improving productivity and reducing proprietary hardware by consolidating legacy and modern AI workloads into a single platform. I heard Ragu is getting an Audi e-tron. I wonder if he's coming from one of these factories. <laughs> but all joking aside, as edge deployments continue to expand, VMware solutions are also transforming. And today, I'm pumped, excited to announce Edge Compute Stack 
Yes, these are awesome. This is our fully integrated ITOT Edge platform with enhancements such as virtual hyperthreading that allows us to increase density for real-time workloads. And TKJ 2.0 supports the smaller cluster sizes and GPA, uh, GPU pass-throughs for enterprise edge. VMware also supports device edge platforms run on Atom and core processors, allowing you to simultaneously run IT, OT workloads and workloads on a single stack. But the edge doesn't stop there. It also includes telco. And two years ago, Dish embarked on an ambitious journey with VMware to create the most advanced automated cloud-based 5G network in the US. Today, VMware's solution runs on thousands of Dish cell towers and many more to come. Their control plane and core virtual network functions also run on VMware solutions. And their network combines the distributed telco, public cloud, and public cloud while delivering that consistent, low latency edge computing. It's a network that was born in the cloud. We tend to, as the container runtime for the network functions, by leveraging VMware Cloud's offering. Dish is making history. That's right. Wow, we talked about private clouds, public clouds, and edge. And there is so much more we want to share with you all this week. We only scratched the surface. But for now, I'm going to pass it back to Amanda for the next segment. Give it up for vSphere 8! Let's hear it! vSphere 8, vSAN 8, VMware Cloud everywhere at the edge. We've talked about being able to build your workloads, modern applications, being able to run them on VMware Cloud everywhere, the platform for modern and traditional workloads. But why do we build these applications? Well, they're for your business. And so let's talk about how we can give you secure and easy access to these applications through our Anywhere Workspace innovations. Please welcome Teresa Chen. Organizations understand that hybrid work must be a priority. And that's why we built the Anywhere Workspace, our platform for hybrid work. It enables all employees seamless and secure access to any app on any device from anywhere. The Anywhere Workspace is built on the core technologies you know and love us for, Horizon and Workspace ONE. And we've expanded that to include workspace security and digital employee experience. Today, I'm jazzed, excited, insert adjective, to announce three key advancements to the platform, all enabling agility as well as the ability to automate. First, let's start with automation. We're expanding automation by supporting Freestyle Orchestrator across all devices, including mobile. Freestyle Orchestrator allows IT admins the ability to create and orchestrate complex workflows that are critical to the business. Whether it's onboarding devices, or managing app entitlements, or even orchestrating firmware updates, Freestyle Orchestrator allows us to do this at scale. And the customers, they're already experiencing the benefits. From eliminating thousands of custom strips to minimizing onboarding time from days to minutes. This is a clear testament of the efficiency and simplicity it brings to IT. But 
Automation means nothing if you can't leverage data and insights. With intelligence-guided root cause analysis, a new capability in Workspace ONE, we're leveraging machine learning and a data-driven approach to really drill down on the root cause behind every single incident. Take, for example, if an app crashes. How does IT know what's the actual root cause? With intelligence-guided RCA, we take care of all of that and we can resolve issues much faster. We create automations for proactive prevention and we can restore productivity for impacted employees. Finally, today I'm really excited and happy to introduce the general availability of the next-gen Horizon Cloud. We've seen a huge increase in the need for secure remote access through desktops as a service and the ability to deliver it at scale and with agility is just as important. This next generation platform absorbs our existing Horizon components and moves them into our cloud control plane. And the results, they're pretty amazing. We've seen over a 70% reduction in cost as well as increased scale by almost twofold. We're excited about all of these innovations and invite you to learn more in our afternoon solutions keynote today. But for now, to learn more about the future of work, I'm really, really happy to introduce futurist and best-selling author, Jacob Morgan. It was a dark and stormy night. A captain is sitting, writing in his log when he's interrupted by one of his officers. Captain, we have an emergency. There's a ship 15 miles ahead of us, and they refuse to get out of the way. Well, don't they know who we are? Tell them to move. We tried that, sir, but they refuse. Well, then I'll tell them. The captain heads over to the bridge and he sends out a message. Move starboard 15 degrees. He gets a message back. You move starboard 15 degrees. Captain can't believe what he's hearing. Who would dare speak to him, a captain, in such a way? He sends out another message. This is Captain James W. Smith the 12th. I am commanding you to move starboard 15 degrees now. A message comes back. This is Fred. And I am commanding you to move starboard 15 degrees yourself. Now, at this point, the captain is furious. He decides to send out one last message. This is the USS Missouri. We are the largest, the greatest, and the most powerful ship in the naval fleet. And if you do not move starboard 15 degrees now, we will be forced to take action. A message comes back. This is the lighthouse. <laughs> Organizations around the world and the leaders who run them believe that they are these big battleships that don't need to be agile. They assumed that they could just pick a destination and using outdated workplace practices that they can reach that destination and achieve success. But that approach to work no longer makes any sense. If you were to look up the word employee in the dictionary right now, you would find that synonyms for the word employee include cog and servant. For manager, the synonyms include boss and my personal favorite, zookeeper. <laughs> and if you look up the word work in the dictionary, you will find that synonyms include daily grind, drudgery, and struggle. This means that we are all cogs working for zookeepers as we go about our daily drudgery. Do you remember that movie Office Space? It was this hilarious comedy 
And a lot of people today watch it like it's some kind of a weird documentary. This is the very ship that we are trying to turn. But it's not an easy thing to do because this is what we know. This is what we're used to. This is what we have experienced. But in a rapidly changing and uncertain world, if you want to thrive, what matters most isn't what you know, it's how you think. And we have to change the way that we think about work. And we can do that in three ways. First, we have to reconnect with our employees to find out what they care about and what they value. Whether that's hybrid work solutions where an employee can be in a corporate headquarters or a coffee shop, or whether that's helping employees connect with a sense of purpose and meaning. It's clear that the ways in which we work is changing. And organizations have to adapt and evolve if they want to be able to attract and retain talent. Next, we have to redefine what it means to be a leader. As a leader, you need to be agile because agility creates resiliency. As a leader, you have to embrace a new set of mindsets and skill sets. You have to lead by putting people first, and you have to stand for something more than just making a buck. And lastly, we have to redesign our organization so that employees actually want, not need, to show up to work each day. And we can do that by focusing on employee experience. We have seen more change in the past 36 months than we have in the past 36 years, and all of you have felt and experienced that change. We keep asking, what is the future of work? But the real question that we should be asking is what is the future of work that you want to see happen? And how are you going to make that a reality? If you are able to be agile and turn the ship, then you will move from dark and stormy nights to smooth sailing with clear skies and sunshine. Is your organization Are your leaders, are you ready to turn the ship? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jacob. Agility is definitely a key to success for today's hybrid work era. And nobody knows agility better than my next guest. In fact, his business demands it. I'm thrilled to bring aboard Head of Commercial Technology, McLaren Racing, Ed Green. Cool. Well, thank you. It's an absolute privilege to be here this morning and, and join everyone here today. So I'm going to explain a little bit about what we get up to here at McLaren. And it says down here I should explain a little bit about my job at McLaren. But in truth, it doesn't really feel like a job. It's a bit of a dream to come and work at a team like McLaren and get to travel the world racing cars everywhere we go. And even more so than just racing the cars, I get to work with so many of our great technical partners, exposure to the latest tech, best innovation, and I'll share a little bit about what we've been up to with VMware. But before I do, what do we do? So as we go racing this weekend, in fact, just this afternoon out in, uh, out in Amsterdam, the IT rig rolls off the track, and it rolls off the trucks with the two cars. It's the only thing we have, uh, the only one we have along with the two cars. And it gets plumbed into the garage, and 22 times a year, we build a data center right out at the edge. And it's pretty impressive. But what do we do 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 with that? Well, as these two cars make their way around the track, and Lando and Daniel go at 200 miles an hour, we're collecting 300 sensors of producing a terabyte and a half worth of information that we have to analyze to try and find the edge. And when I talk about edge, it's milliseconds. Milliseconds can make the difference between pole and second, but they also make the difference between finishing first and last. And so everything we do is about marginal gains and trying to find ways to go faster. And that means our people have to work all around the world. And this is an example of where our team would work out of. When we talked about the pandemic and people having to work from home and doing that, it felt a little bit cheating for us. We'd done that for over 30 years. We've been working out at the edge in garages, in trucks, from hotel rooms, the airplane lounge, you name it. And so for us, when the pandemic hit, it was just scaling that across the organization. 
and taking the good lessons we'd learned from having a team of 80 engineers traveling the world and scaling that into everyone's bedrooms, front rooms, and wherever they were working from. But we also found a challenge with that. Delivering IT services to the people at the edge used to be a case of deliver them a laptop and stand back and don't touch it. But we needed to do something different. And so I was really delighted when we got the opportunity to work with VMware and put Workspace ONE across the entire organization. This is the type of environment we see people working in. Here's Hiroshi, he's our tire expert, and he'll be analyzing all of the data coming from the car to predict what tire we should move to next. And that's critical in this current modern era of Formula One racing. What you don't see is behind the scenes this weekend, that was out in Monaco earlier this year, is we had to deploy 200 Android devices out to the team. We just signed a partnership with Google, which was really exciting, and we had 200 devices arrive at the office ready to be deployed at Trackside. And the team at Google said to me, this is great, and we want to launch the partnership, but have you thought about how you're going to manage these devices? And I said, uh, well, without trying to let the cat out of the bag, we've got this awesome partnership coming with VMware. I said, we might be thinking about doing Workspace ONE. And all of them on the call just said, oh, well, thank goodness for that. You're doing the right thing. And so we had to go and take these 200 devices out to track. If you ever see me at an airport, do not follow me through security. I'm trying to offload 200 tablets through um, all the trays going through airports. It's not the most fun. But we delivered it. We put these 200 tablets into the garage. We put uh, Android phones into people's pockets, all running Workspace ONE, allowing us to deliver secure access right to the edge so that engineers could look at trackside data on their phones in a secure way for the first time ever, giving our strategists, our, our team directors, our team principals a better safety uh, and, and better, uh, more feeling safer that team telemetry isn't going to go anywhere. It doesn't just stop in the garage. It moves out to the grid. And we deploy IT in these strange places. My first ever week at McLaren, I found someone vacuuming out the rear of a server. And I said, why are you doing that? And they said, oh, it's, it's collecting all the carbon dust in the garage. So we deploy IT into weird places, to trolleys next to cars in order to fire up the engines. And we do other weird things as well. And then finally, it doesn't just stop there. We also have this guest hospitality experience. And back up in the guest hospitality area, it was amazing. You could go and have a look down on top of the cars, but you couldn't get the data onto your phone or device. And so we wanted a way to securely deploy a suite of applications that our guests, whenever they joined us at a race, could see on their tablets and phones and use to interact with us a little bit more. It's no good saying we're one of the most technically advanced sports on the planet when all you can do in our hospitality area is just look down on the garage. And we're able to do that with VMware. We're able to deploy a suite of applications. You can look at the same weather charts the strategists look at. You can watch the race. You can look inside the garage and even see some telemetry coming from the cars. And if those devices leave the circuit, we know we can shut them down and keep them secure. And that was super important to us. And finally, and the reason I think I've got a pretty cool job, is there's not many of us that get to do this. There's about 20 people that work in IT at McLaren. And so I'm sure we'll be taking some job applications soon. But it's a really lean team. And we have to depend on our partners to go racing. It's not just a game of stickers on cars. And Zach reminds me of that every day I speak to him. But it's a game about making sure our partners help us go faster on track. And I'm delighted to have VMware joining us on that journey. So thank you. Ed, thank you so much. Pleasure. Amazing story. Thank you, Ed. All right. So some really, really great announcements there in the NAWA workspace area. Um, I love how we're doing all this automation around Freestyle Orchestrator, around the intelligent RCA, really simplifying that end user experience. And of course, continuing to push the envelope with this next generation Horizon Cloud. So, hopefully this gives you a good understanding of the breadth of the technologies and innovations that we're bringing to bear as we fundamentally change the architecture from relying solely on single cloud services to embracing cross-cloud services. This is the VMware cross-cloud services portfolio and how we enable you to get to cloud smart. Now, of course, this is not something that we can do alone, but in fact, we need to be partnering with you, our customers, with our partners, and with the broader VMware community. And in fact, that is why we have evolved VMworld to become VMware Explore. It is the center of the multi-cloud universe, and where we will collectively figure out this next generation architecture of cross-cloud services. 